Welcome back to EDU in INE. On this episode, we'll be looking at Google Drawings, a web-based diagramming tool that's a G Suite for Education core service. That's right. On Twitter, we recently asked you about your favorite classroom uses for this versatile tool. And we were blown away by the creative and diverse recommendations that you shared. Everything from graphic organizers and infographics to postcards and lessons on media literacy. Let's take a closer look at some favorite suggestions. Magazine layouts, memes, concept maps, observational drawings, and more. It was inspiring to see how you're using Google Drawings across grade levels and across subject areas. Let's kick things off with a few math examples. Google Drawings is a natural fit for the mathematics classroom. And many of you mentioned innovative uses with maps and diagrams. Sarah Simon leads a class of second grade students and uses Google Drawings to teach how to divide shapes into equal parts. Later, her students are able to demonstrate their understanding by shading with the Drawing Scribble tool. And for emerging mathematicians, it's important to build an arsenal of problem-solving strategies. Mandy Walker in Ontario uses Google Drawings to create a mathematics strategy journal for students to use as they build their math skills over the years and solve more complex problems. Google Drawings can be a strong match for literacy lessons, too. We love Casey Bell's Magnetic Poetry Game. With this lesson, she used Google Drawings and Slide to help students develop skills independently or as part of collaborative activity. Graphic novels are an innovative literacy strategy, and Chris Casal in Brooklyn recommends using drawings to create characters for use in the graphic novels he creates with his students and slides. We also heard from many of you that drawings can be a helpful tool for customization. For Roxy Thompson students, Google Drawings enable creativity when they develop unique visuals for their blog posts. And Amanda Dykes has leveraged drawings in a broad range of ways, including for website graphics and to develop slide templates that she uses both with students and with other educators. We also loved her tip to use drawings to create custom headers for important Google Forms. That way, she's able to quickly locate the form that she needs and verify that it's the correct one. Well, that does it for this episode, but we've included the full set of tips below if you're interested in seeing more recommendations from your peers. And be sure to subscribe to the Google for Education YouTube channel. We'll see you next time. Ready to unlock your students' imaginations? Check out our last episode where we share all the details about Google Science Fair. <laughs>